Why is every single Fire Emblem character in Smash Brothers, except for Alm? Hey guys, Axel Myth here, and today we're going to be talking about this game right here, Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valencia. Such a great game, and oh, I dropped it. It's a turn-based tactical RPG. It, so it's kind of like chess, but not really. But it also goes so much deeper than that, where, you know, some units are better than the other. It's kind of got like a rock, paper, scissors thing going on, where some units are better against others than, you know, some. It's, um, if you get really into it, it goes really deep. Um, there's also like this, um, weird, like, Mila's turn wheel, something like that, where basically, um, where basically, it, it's like a redo where you t for your turn. Um, and you can go as far back as like the beginning, so you can do redo like the entire thing if you want. So say one of your units dies, you can use Mila's turn wheel and they'll be back, you know what I mean? So, it kind of makes the game easy, but trust me, like this game, um, this game is actually pretty, you know, really makes you think. Um, I sunk 60 hours into this game. It was, you know... That's a lot of hours for, you know, for me. So the funny thing is, is like, I actually didn't know about that until pretty late in the game when it actually started getting really hard. Um, because like, there's this one lady who, I think her name was Jenny or something like that. And she, I don't know, just her hair and her clothes reminded me of a sheep. So I'd call her the sheep lady because I didn't really, I didn't really listen to her name <laughs> at first. But, um, so basically, um, I, she died, and she's like, she was like my only healer, so I ended up with, like, out a healer throughout the entire game, because I didn't know you could do that, and, um, there's like a few fountains of healing that you can find in, uh, these explorable areas, and I'll get to that in a minute, but I used it up on some other characters that had died, so that she just kind of... She, she was just kind of dead throughout the entire, you know, second half of the journey or something like that. So that was pretty sad. But, um, anyway. Um, the explorable areas, yeah. Um, those are actually really interesting. I guess they're actually kind of original to this one. Um, and that goes all the way back to the Famicom, where um, you could um, go to towns and, you know, explore and talk to people. But um, you can also explore dungeons. And that's, that's mostly what this one ta takes that from the Famicom is that you can explore 3D spaces. Um, I was a little disappointed with that because it wasn't as in-depth as like Legend of Zelda. I thought that they could throw some puzzles in there, but um, it, it was still fun nonetheless. And the 3D looks, you know, 3D looks really good in this game as well. So like the graphics are just really good. Um, I, I will say that there were times where um, some of the character, I don't know if it's because of the resolution or the character models, but sometimes the characters looked off, sometimes they looked amazing. This game has uh, cutscenes as well. Um, beautifully animated. They're a little too choppy, I think. Um, I haven't played literally any other Fire Emblem game, but even I admit that um, it was a little too choppy. I know that they were kind of going for the anime style, and believe me, they really nailed that. Um, especially the character development, but yeah, beautifully animated. Um, it looks great. Um, I will. And I, um, one complaint I do have is that um, most of the cutscenes are pictures. Like you know, they just have like a you know foot foot you know a picture of the two characters talking, and you know they have different emotions on their faces and stuff. It's not like those aren't animated, but they do have animated animated segments. Um, but they also have like these, uh, still images and those are beautifully, those are very beautifully drawn and, um, very, very well done. Um, sometimes they made me laugh because they'd have the, uh, like, you know, somebody run away and instead, or, you know, something, a total, t a, a tone shift would happen and, um, you know, th that picture's still there, so it's like, 
she never, you know, that person never left. Why, why are you crying? You know what I mean? It was just, <laughs> it was just kind of funny. Um, and the voice acting is just so good. Like there were times where there was just a heartfelt thing going on, and you know, I could really, I could really feel for that person because just because of you know the voice that was coming from it. It was. The, the voice acting was phenomenal in this game. There's also like this buddy system and um, there's like C, B, and A grade and basically how that works is you have two units kind of by each other a lot and they'll like build a, a relationship and um, I think there's like literally every 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 mix-up that you can possibly have. Um, I, I believe that there's a tier, you know, that there's the tier list for that and basically all it is is like um it's like that's not as in-depth as it is in other games because like in fire emblem like awakening i think it is or uh, there's a whole bunch of other ones that do this if you get that a grade buddy thing um like you'll get another unit from it in the, some other games like it's like their kid from the future or something like that i don't know um, but this game, it's pretty simple. It just shows the relationship that these people have with each other. But by doing that, um, it shows character development and it shows that these characters really, you know, these characters' relationships grow and, you know, um, and by the end of it, like, I just remember caring for some other people. Because, like, um, you know, at the ending, like, um, I had a few people die and, um... You know, like, one of them, you know, there's, like, this character named Gray and his friend Tobin. And, um, they both can't, they, it's optional, but they both can go with Alm on his journey. And, like, I think Tobin was the one who died. And, it, you know, at the ending where, you know, it was reading off, it said that, you know, um, Gray fell into, like, drinking and all this others. And, you know, but, you know, his, this lady he's interested in, Claire you know, got him out of that, and then, you know, they lived happily ever after, you know, or something like that, and, um, that, that really does, and that changes depending on, you know, um, I think, it might change on the buddy system, I'm not sure, but I do know that it changes depending on who died, and what tipped me off was this one, Celica, the other main protagonist of the story, has two characters named Bowie and May, they're her best friends and everything, um, but basically, Bowie and May end up kind of liking each other. Spoiler alert, sorry, but... Um, and basically, um, May was another one who uh, died at the final battle for me. And what it said was that, you know, he felt so bad about her her passing that he just put himself in his work. He became like this leader of this uh, weird Mila church or whatever. And it was like, you know, it really made me feel for him because it was like, yeah, that you know, that's got to suck. You lost, you know... And it, it makes you feel bad as the player because it's like you could have, you know, played better or something, you know what I mean? But at the same time, it's like, you know, at the same time, it's like sacrifice the few to save the many, you know what I mean? Um, although, with saying that, I do want to say you cannot sacrifice Alm or Celica. Um, that's instant game over. They are your kings, if, if you will. So I want to talk about the final battle. The final battle literally took me eight hours by on its own and like i think it was like two i think it was like two or three tries for an hour and five to six hours for the final one where um i sacrificed a few characters to win i think it was like two or three times were like a failed attempt and then five to six hours for the last to go at it because like man this game makes you think this does kind of bring up a problem i had near the end game where 30 to 40 percent chance of actually hitting me would hit like almost 100 percent of the time and 70 to 60 percent chance of hitting somebody else would hit like 30 to 40 percent of the time and you'd think well you know maybe it's not no because 100 when it's 100 percent you're gonna hit that person when it's zero percent you're not going to hit that person. When it's 12%, you're, you're, odds are you're probably not going to hit that person. But for some reason, especially near the end game, when somebody had like a, th you know, a 30% chance, they just like hit me twice in a row, I'd have a 70% chance 
and hit them none no times it was it was a little ridiculous but um when I finally beat that final boss, Duma, man, like it was, it was awesome. It was, it felt worth it. And then seeing the credits, like, and like what these characters went on to do, um, is just awesome. And I really wish that I could have seen the, you know, perfect ending, if you will, with all of the units alive. And, um, but do I recommend Fire Emblem? Yes, if you have time. If you don't have a lot of time maybe skip it because um like it's a great game don't get me wrong but it's time consuming man um like obviously you don't have to play it you know religiously but like um that like the si i've played it for 60 hours and that was just the regular game i didn't do many side quests i didn't do a lot outside of the you know actual tactic stuff and exploring the caves man like, it's a series that I want to go forward with, but I don't necessarily want to go back and play the old, older ones because, like, this game was hard on its own. Um, and it only gets harder the farther you go back. I heard the GBA ones were easier than the Super Nintendo ones, but it, it wasn't much easier than those, really. But it's a series I wouldn't mind going forward with. So, like... I know that Fire Emblem Three Houses is out. Um, we actually own it, so I'll, I'll probably end up playing that one, and I, I might actually make a full, full blown like actual like um, review out of it. I mean, like you know, obviously this is a review of that, but like where I actually think things out because I'm actually having a, a little trouble recording this because I'm an idiot. Um, if I was going to go back to one, I might do Fire Emblem Awakening. Um, because Birth, um, Fire Emblem Fates actually has, like, three games to it, and I'm just like, ooh, no. No, thank you. I hope this video didn't end up too choppy. I'm actually having a lot of trouble, uh, recording it. I'm just, I'm just so wore out from work. Um, but this is Axel Myth, and I hope you guys have a nice week.